and you will have to get the fuel with 10 ppm sulfur. The next greening step basically for India is to Euro 6. In Euro 6 basically we have made 100 fold improvement in the main pollutants, particulate matter and NOx. And the next step for us is to switch over to zero emission vehicle which are popularly known as new energy vehicles in the world. If we consider options about the electric buses, we have the option for the battery buses with the night charging, that is slow charging and the fast charging, we have the option for the hybrid buses, we have the option for the plug-in hybrid, we have also the option for the trolley buses in the world. For the electric buses, the various options have been discussed. The options for us are basically continuous charging, that is with the use of pantograph, we have overnight charging that we have discussed and for opportunity charging, Suppose we have, we reduce the basically battery bank on board and then we, we can also have the opportunity, we can also basically avail opportunity charging at the terminal points. There also we have two technologies available for inductive charging and conductive charging. I will take up now the main obstacles faced in, by the world to, for the introduction of the electric vehicle. The top challenge was, was, was faced by the high upfront cost of the bus. The cost of the e-bus is 2.5 times the price of a conventional bus in India, whereas in the world it is 2 times. The cost of the battery itself is 50 to 55 percent in India, whereas in the world it is 45 percent. Charging infrastructure cost and installation is another additional cost. So basically the evolution is based on total cost of ownership models. Second challenge is basically the performance has to be proved equivalent to the conventional bus. A good analysis of the operation list is the key, basically to design, design the e-bus solution. Basically, bus is the principal mode and they enjoy the flexibility of operation. We can change the alignment of the route as per the traffic requirement. But if we basically go for the your opportunity charging and say install some uh, charging station, then we will lose that flexibility. That we have to keep it in mind. Third challenge is basically all the buses Say in the euro, they are being inducted under concession model through private entity. So who will take the ownership, what will be the uh, responsibility and functions of the different stakeholders, what will be the contact period, what is the life of the vehicles, all these are the challenges. Four challenge that is most important is, you may buy electric vehicles from different manufacturers. So there should be some standard for the charging infrastructure. There should be interoperability, that is the main challenge. Tomorrow you may not have to install different charging stations for different vehicle manufacturers. Next challenge basically is for the energy sector, stability of the electric cost in India is also very important. Then if we take how this electric vehicle project is being taken up, it is being taken up by environment requirement rather than business requirement, sometimes it is also influenced by the national energy policy. In the Europe, if we take the overall scenario of the electric vehicles, they have so far planned 1,200 buses only. They have inducted 770 buses so far. And their preference for the night charging, if we take the number of buses, the ratio is night charging, two buses, and one bus for the opportunity charging. And the top countries are UK, Germany, Netherlands, and Switzerland. Shenzhen. Shenzhen is a pioneer basically for electric vehicles. They have introduced more than 4,000 buses under Shenzhen Bus Group Company Limited. The driving range is 190 km to 203 km. The main driving factor in Shenzhen is they have introduced energy policy where they introduce 50% subsidy on the night charging on the electricity tariff. And they also have job the incremental cost of the electric vehicles. Electric bus driveline, the core components are battery and electric motor. For the traction electrics, we have the option of the external energy supply or the onboard energy generation. This is important. For the electric bus drive line, in the electric motor, there are three technologies available. One is the central mounted motor, then the motor mounted on the both the axle sides, then the wheel hub type motors. If we go from the left to right, the level of the noise pollution goes down and it is minimum with the wheel hub. Many of us have the curiosity to know if the engine is mounted at the front or the rear in the vehicle, where the electric motor mounted. Electric motor is mounted basically on the axle on the both sides, along with the transmission. If it is other than centrally mounted technology. 
Then one, the battery in the heart of the challenge, yes. energy density is very important. One kg diesel, energy is equivalent to, we have to put a battery which has a weight of 50 kg. That we have to keep it in mind. If we have to install a battery bank for 250 km with a 324 kilowatt hour battery, the weight of the battery itself is 5 ton. Then all, all of us talk about the lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries also have the various variants. For the slow charging, if we decide to go for the slow charging, we have to go for the lithium iron phosphate battery or the lithium metal polymer. If we decide to go for the fast charging, then we have the option for the lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt oxide battery or the lithium titan, titanoid bat oxide battery depending upon the temperature in the city. This I have tried to show you where the battery bags are fitted in the vehicles. Three battery packs are fitted in the vehicle in the yellow, yellow color you can see in a 12 meter bus. Then regarding energy consumption, everybody is worried. The international experience in the first case is basically for a 12 meter bus, the energy consumption without air conditioning is 1.3 kilowatt hour per kilometer in the urban conditions. And if you put heating and air conditioning, when heating ventilation, air conditioning system also on, then it is 2.5 kilowatt hour per kilometer in the same condition. With these parameters, you can now de decide and work out the capacity of the battery bank by this formula. Suppose you require a bus to drive for a 250 km, you can multiply by 1.3 kW, you will get the capacity of the battery bank. Another very important thing about the battery is depth of discharge for the performance. It should never go below 90% for the optimum performance. That is why you have to keep 10% buffer also. Then for the charging strategies, you have the option for the depot charging, opportunity charging, you have to make a balance for the batteries. If you put the dead weight of the battery, then the passenger carrying capacity of the vehicle reduces. If you talk about K9 D model, the unladen weight itself is more than 13 tons. Whereas under CMVR, the gross vehicle weight is 16.5 tons. So we have reduced the passenger carrying capacity. Two minutes, well, sir. Okay. Then energy consumption, what we have achieved in Delhi is 1.61 unit per kilometer on the, with the air conditioning working. Then type of charging systems, we have discussed these are manufacturers. Then for the overnight charging, we need to plug in this kind of equipment we require for the plug-in. For the flash charging, we require this kind of equipment. And this is the flash charging we get basically charged in 15 seconds for 2 kilometer if bus carrying capacity is 130 passengers. This system is working in Geneva. Then this is the opportunity for charging based on side finger. Then this is induction charging. Then there is a project known as Zero Emission Urban Bus System Project which has been launched in Europe with the coordination has been done by the UITP where all the vehicle manufacturers are participating and they are working in the real time the best e-bus solutions and setting the benchmark for the e-bus systems. <coughs> and these are all the vehicle manufacturers that go the globe. Now Solaris is coming up basically now with the JBM. Volvo is coming up. Your BYD is a big operator. They are now bringing CKD and making assembly here. And these are all the photographs of all the buses available across the globe. Then Stockholm is covered basically. In 6 minutes, they are able to charge for 8 kilometers through in a Volvo bus through opportunity charging. Then RATP green, going green, basically they have launched a program, bus 2025, high tech bus program. Now hybrid they consider basically the whole technology. Everybody in the Europe is now switching over to the pure electric vehicles now. They have now dream to switch over to 100% electric, pure electric vehicles. And for that, they are following system approach. They have signed basically a MOU with the suppliers, industry, PTOs, PTAs, research institute to decide basically the framework and work out the overall responsibilities to be taken up by each entity. Thank you. Well, 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 well.